In this advanced yoga practice, we will begin by turning our attention inwards. So as you close your eyes, feel yourself inside your body. And bring your awareness to your sitting bones. Begin to gently rock your weight towards the front and then towards the back of the sitting bones. Looking for a place where you will feel most grounded. When you find that place, see if you can relax your shoulders, feeling as if you are relaxing your shoulders through your sitting bones and down into the ground. Let your spine elongate not by pulling it upwards, but in fact by softening the muscles around it. Now we're going to begin to inhale for the count of four and exhale for the count of eight. If this is too long for you, please adjust accordingly, maintaining the analogy of inhale to exhale, one to two. So begin by inhaling and exhaling all the air out. And then inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, Exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Inhale, one, two, three, four, and exhale, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And relax your breath. And now we're going to do 15 rapid breaths from the diaphragm, keeping the chest relatively still. After which we're going to take a deep inhale, hold the breath for as long as comfortable, and then exhale comfortably and completely. So it goes like this. And we're going to do five rounds of this whole cycle. So when you are ready, inhale, hold, and exhale. You exhale as soon as you feel the need to do so.
When you complete the fifth round, maintain the awareness on the inner body. Notice how you are feeling. What is your mental state? And then, when you are ready, open your eyes and let's begin the asana practice. So come to all fours. Establish the connection with the ground from shoulders down into the wrists, from hips down into your knees. And then invite the spine to begin to move. So be curious about what kind of movement does your spine want to create today? How does this movement connect to the breath? What parts of your spine do you feel more smooth and which parts move less smoothly, getting a little bit stuck on the way? Just explore and let your spine be free. If this is too hard on your wrists, you can put your elbows on the ground and continue the movement in the same fashion. And then center yourself in the neutral and begin to exhale as you round your spine and to inhale as you stretch the front of your spine. And when you stretch the front of the spine, do not collapse here, but just go to that point where you feel that everything is still connected, your pelvis, belly, rib cage, and head are in a relationship. There is a continuity between them and no part is moving at the expense of the other. Now from this position we're going to come into a squat, so take your hands back and then bring your heels either to the ground or to a rolled mat underneath your heels or a blanket or a block. Here we're shifting the weight forward and back from heels to toes, from heels to toes. And we are exploring the connection with the ground. Then coming back to our hands, this time keep the knees up and start to shift the weight of your pelvis left and right. Imagine if, as if your pelvis were a bowl and filled with water and you are moving this water from the right edge to the left edge. When you go to the right, feel the, the weight in your right hand and notice how you can align your wrist in a way that is comfortable for you to take this weight. Okay, and then walk yourself forward. Feet are wide open, knees are bent, and then you can relax your spine with a little bit of a shaking movement, or just be in stillness, relaxing the neck, the head.
Then as you straighten your legs more and more, start to lift the torso, bring the elbows to your thighs. Lift the pelvis, lift the sitting bones up a little bit, and then draw them downwards towards your heels. A few times going back and forth with your pelvis, anterior, posterior tilt. And then with your head, with your heels grounding, lift all the way up, reach up, you can even look up if you wish. And on your next exhale, bring your hands to the sides of your torso. Inhale as you lift from the center of the chest upwards, and then bend your knees slightly, and on the exhale, bow forward. Walk your hands a little bit forward and your legs a little bit back. Stay with your knees bent and practice going as low as you can with your knees and then pulling back up. Pelvis back, you don't have to have your knees fully straight. Bending the knees, more weight onto the hands, more engagement at the center of your body and then pushing yourself back. Let the breath be free instead of trying to synchronize it with the movement. Let it be natural, whatever the body requires. And then walk forward again towards the forward fold. With your knees bent, rise up, lift up, if you wish, look up, and exhale, bring your hands to your heart. Release the hands down to the sides. Now come to the top of your mat, and lift your right leg up, and hold for 20 seconds. While you are holding, notice if your hip flexors are holding the leg, or if you're starting to engage from the outer thigh and the buttock. So hopefully it will be from the hip flexors, which will indicate that they are quite strong. And to the other side. And because we stretch the hip flexors, the psoas muscles so very often in yoga, we really want it to be also strong muscle so that we have a good ratio of strength and flexibility and you can switch again pelvis is neutral so with your awareness of the sitting bones just have your pelvis neither tilted back nor forward Switch sides. And then come down. So now we're going to stretch them a little bit, lift up again, right leg up, and then bend the left knee and start to reach with your right leg back until it finds the floor. When it finds the floor, you're shifting the weight a little bit back, and now you can feel the stretch in the hip flexor muscles. And from here, we're going to try to come back forward with the leg lifted. And we'll do this two more times, bending the left knee, to reach back with the right foot, slow descent, more control means you're going to need to employ more strength. And coming back forward. And going back again. Forward 
and release the leg down. Pause for a moment. And switch sides. Left leg up. And then bend the right knee and reach with your left leg as far back as you can without losing balance. Shoulders are relaxed. The breath is free. Come forward. Lift the leg up. Notice the difference between the two sides in your ability to hold balance as well as in the amount of strength. Coming forward again, lifting the leg up and then reaching back, back, back. Okay, last time coming forward and up and then bring the leg down and pause for a moment. Lift the arches of your feet and let that lift spread throughout the body, even in the shoulders, even in the arms. Make yourself really wide and then on the inhale reach up and on the exhale, bow forward. And as you inhale, extend the spine long. And then place your hands down and step back to downward facing dog. And then from here, come to plank and hold. Now, provided that your pelvis or chest do not sink down like this, then you can explore joining the feet and lifting one leg up and you will feel a lot of engagement in the hamstrings and in the right buttock. And then switch. And then bring it down, open the legs, bring the knees to the floor. Push yourself back into a stretch. You can come to the fingertips also, so that you don't drop the shoulders. And then we're gonna go one more for plank position. So here it is either holding it here or lifting one leg at a time. Then release the knees down to the floor. Stretch yourself back. Walk your hands a little bit to the right to stretch the left side. And then to the left to stretch the right side. Come back to the center, place your right elbow to the ground and point your fingers towards the left side. Bring your outer edge of your right foot on the floor and the left foot on the floor also. Now, try here to lift the pelvis as much as you can and then slowly bring it almost to the floor. Then as you press the ground with your right elbow you lift up and then down. Lifting up and bringing down. And at the end release the thigh to the floor Switch to the other side. Lifting up. 
And from here, going up and down five times. And then release the thigh down and come onto your belly. On your belly, extend the leg back, legs back, and then lift your chest and then lift the hands. And release. Lift your chest, lift your hands, and then lift the legs up. And now stay here and breathe, staying for as long as feels right for you. Bring your hands down, slowly push yourself back into downward facing dog. Now bring your knees to the floor, bring your elbows to the floor and interlace your fingers. When you're ready, press your elbows into the floor, lift your hips up and walk in a little bit. Now notice the points of contact with the ground, the balls of your feet, your elbows. And Observe how this can shift when you bend your knees. You can push your elbows more into the ground and take the weight more onto your feet. When you straighten the legs, the weight comes more onto the elbows. So play with it a little bit. Finding the right place for you, where you feel stable, grounded, and able to go into an inversion in a second. And then release, knees to the floor, come to child's pose. Slowly come on up. Take your hands back behind you, stretching your shoulders back. And then lift your arms over your head. This is how you're going to be in the handstand. So as a preparation, just um, investigate what is it like? What's, what's the connection between the pelvis, the rib cage, and the shoulders, and even the head in this position? And try to maintain that connection when you are upside down. So from downward facing dog, walk in. Shoulders over your wrists, and then hop up. And explore the continuity between various centers, pelvis, rib cage, head. <laughs> Play with your balance. And then come down and rest. I'm resting with my knees towards my armpits. And turn to one side and come on up. Bring your feet together. 
Take a breath, soften your spine, and from that softening, let it elongate. And then if you wish to go further down into more of a flexion, you can do that. And slowly lift yourself back up. Extend the left leg forward, bring the right leg across. Prepare for a twist. Sitting bones grounded and slowly move into a twist patiently, observing how each segment of the spine rotates in a different degree. And then come back and do the same on the other side. So I'm not pulling myself with my hands. I'm rotating with the spine. And I know that I have not been pulling with the hands because if I release the hands, I'm still at the same position as with the hands. Uh, slowly coming back to the center, Dandasana, legs straight, flex, toes spread, hands to the sides of your hips. And again, what makes me elongate my spine without pulling it up? Relaxing into the sitting bones, softening the spinal muscles allowing for a little bit of a movement to take place as needed. Yeah, and then the spine is nice and long without too much effort. Okay, now let's open the legs a little bit wider and go into a Paschimottanasana with that same approach of softening the spine instead of tensing it or pulling it. So I'm going to feel the sitting bones with the ground and feel free to bend your knees as you need to. Then I'm going to fold forward Extend my arms forward, but with my arms I'm not going to pull the spine. I'm just going to rest them here. And then I will bring my attention to softening. Softening the shoulders. Softening the weight down. Through the lower back, into the sacrum, into the sitting bones. And this softening, a lot of times, will give me a natural extension forward or downwards almost as if I'm trying to retreat the legs and the arms into the spine and then the spine feels nice and supported and safe and it can express itself more deeply if it wishes to do so at this moment. Take a seat, cross-legged or some other comfortable position for you for one minute of centering yourself again and then you can rest in Shavasana for as long as you like.
our hands to our heart center, bow the head towards the heart, and then if you wish lie down and rest. Namaste.